الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله تعالى نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا Indeed all praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala our Lord the gracious, the merciful, the master of the earths and the heavens the king of the day of judgment Azza wa Jal and the prayers and the blessings of the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala be upon our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and be upon all those who follow in the footsteps of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Nashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah wahdahu la sharika lah ونشهد أن محمدا عبد الله ورسوله وصفيه من خلقه وخليله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على الحبيب المصطفى وعلى آله وصحبه ومن استنى بسنته وسار على هديه إلى يوم الدين Indeed we bear witness that there is no Lord but the Almighty Allah سبحانه وتعالى and that Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم is the messenger of Allah I remind myself and remind you to be pious to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and everything that you do. To be God conscious and heed the orders of the Almighty Azza wa Jal. When he says, Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu attaqu Allah haqqa tuqatih. Wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun. Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu attaqu Allah wa altanzur nafsum ma qaddamat li ghadi wa attaqu Allah. Inna Allah khabirun bima ta'amalun. Oh, you believe, be God conscious and die in no way except in the way of Islam. Oh, you believe, be God conscious. Fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and let every soul be aware of its own tomorrow. And fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for he knows best what you do. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us the blessings of this day and to accept our deeds, forgive our sins and keep us steadfast. Allahumma ameen. My dear respected brothers and sisters, when we try to distill the essence of the divine message that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prescribed upon us. We can think of two things that are very much the definition of the ibadah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered of us. The first is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as we were ordered. So that there's element of worship. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala most high gave us the knowledge about who he is subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us the knowledge about the, real, the reality of our lives and he ordered us to have a path in order for us to seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in worship so kama amarana and so when we do our prayers our fastings our our hajj our dhikr our memorization and remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the Quran and through the dhikr and the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we're achieving something fundamental, which is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the way he ordered us. And it is the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the only path for us to be able to remain strong and steadfast on his path is by doing the very exact acts of worship that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prescribed upon us. And that's why it occupies a very important part of who we are, that's why we're here today glorifying the Almighty Azza wa Jal in a specified time, in a specified day. And we do this every time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala most high asks us to do. And then there is the other part that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered us to do to achieve his will. To be the missionaries that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prescribed upon us to carry the mission of Islam. And that is... To obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in what he has ordered us to do. And nuti Allah fi ma amarana. So an na'bud Allah kama yurid subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa an nuti Allah fi ma amarana. So when it comes to the part of worshipping Allah subhanahu wa I mean or following the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In what he ordered us, we do look no further than the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the sunnah of his beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu, kunu qawamina lillah shuhada'a bilqist. Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu, kunu qawamina bilqisti shuhada'a lillah. 
كنتم خير أمة أخرجت للناس تأمرون بالمعروف وتنهون عن المنكر وتؤمنون بالله لقد أرسلنا رسلنا بالبينات وأنزلنا معهم الكتاب والميزان ليقوم الناس بالقسط So there are obligations and responsibilities that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala required of us to implement. And so there is no disparity and there is no disconnect between how do we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how do we fulfill His orders upon us. Now in order for us to fulfill the second part of our commitment, we recognize the need for us to be outward with our deen, to reach out, to be part of our own society, to engage and to get involved in the matters that are important to everybody, all of humanity, not just the Muslims. And so when we do this, we find ourselves not only in need to be in pace and in you, in you, in, uh, in uniformly with where we live and responsible for the reality that we live in, and so if we are in 21st century America in the United States, then that becomes the field in which we fulfill the very mission that defines who we are as Muslims. And so that requires of us to understand the reality we live in. It requires of us to develop the very tools by which we can impact and change and transform reality around us in fulfillment of the very mission that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala requires of us. So that dictates that our actions become as important as our acts of worship. Not to minimize the importance and the absolute responsibility of fulfilling the very definition of how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered us to worship him subhanahu wa ta'ala. But not to belittle at all the other responsibility of doing that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala requires of us. When the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was explaining to us the role that we have towards the responsibilities in our society, he made it clear that it is as equivalent and as important as our responsibilities in society. When he equated the actions of those who are taking care of the needy and the poor, with the actions of those who are constantly in the state of jihad, constantly in the state of fasting, constantly in the state of worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so when we look at how is it can we fulfill both and how we can bring about the transformation that we need, we recognize that it's a process we must do. So as a community, as believers, as those who are endowed by the divine guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and as those who are responsible to be actors and people who affect change in their own society, there is a balance that has to be achieved. Some of us look at this as a battle that's already lost. We can't be in society. It's so malicious. It can change us. It can take us away from our Islam. And so they retract in the masjid and they don't want to engage the outside because it will corrupt them. Or it will damage their ability to sustain or maintain their Islam. And that's a fallacy. And then there's the other extreme which thinks that it's all about just engaging and serving, which is very important. Yet they give no significance to the uniqueness and to the divine message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and who defines or what, or what defines who we are as Muslims. We are believing men and women. We worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone and no other. We follow the etiquettes and the rules of the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we need to be able to maintain two, both, in order for us to succeed. Because our deen is about both of them. It's not about just one or the other. Why do I say all this, my dear brothers and sisters? Because even as your brothers and sisters in Dar al-Hijra of recent, when we have looked at the transformation and the growth and the development of our community, we realized that when we first started in so many years back, we were very much concerned about the health of our own community, taking care of their religious needs and developing them as devout Muslims, alhamdulillah. 
But the fact of the matter is that that need cannot be fulfilled and sustained and maintained without paying attention to the circles of the other dynamic that's happening around us. And thus, alhamdulillah, we are doing wonderful portfolio of services and engagement throughout. And that was reflected even in the transformation of the very mission statement that we carried as Darul Hijra, alhamdulillah. So as we engaged our community recently, and, and alhamdulillah, we reached the conclusions that we want to sustain the name for its history and for it, what it means to all of us, we were, alhamdulillah, fast enough to recognize that the mission has expanded. And so today, today the, the Dar al-Hijra's mission is not only educating, developing, and empowering our congregants, but it's also providing services of faith and care for our community and engaging society by building bridges and advocating for social justice. And so I would venture to say, my dear brothers and sisters, that as we want to be true to our own mission, we must understand what is unique about Islam's definition of social justice. Something that, a term that many of us encounter. You guys hear about it, you engage it in the wider society, and alhamdulillah, that's a byproduct of this deep understanding of our deen. But we cannot detach our engagement in those fields from the very principles and values that defines us who, as who we are as Muslims. And so it becomes very important, my dear brothers and sisters, to reflect on what are the, the defining guidelines of such a concept in Islam. When we talk about social justice, we are talking about equality and we're talking about the justice and the distribution of wealth or opportunities or privileges within society. We are talking about human rights, equitable economic distribution, breaking barriers, social mobility, providing social nets, taking care of the services around us, public, where our tax monies go, health, is it a right or is it a privilege, and so on and so forth. So when you engage, you realize that these are very issues that are very much tied to your mission as Muslim. And so there is no discrepancy about being a devout Muslim within the bounds of this masjid, alhamdulillah, and being in the forefront of fighting for these very causes that define the challenges that our society faces today. But we need to bring in our understanding of what Islam provides because when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala most high sent this guidance to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it was meant to be a guidance to all of humanity. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ So this mercy, how do we manifest that if we truly embody this understanding of social justice that is in our mission statement through an actual application of what the values of Islam and the values of our guidance shows into it. And here, my dear brothers and sisters, I want to base it on three points that are very fundamental to anybody who is engaged in the work in reaching out, in civic work, in outreach, in service, even in the acts of enjoining the good and forbidding the evil in setting our nation on the right course, inshallah. We recognize that it all stems, my dear brothers and sisters, from the comprehensive understanding in our deen that stems from the belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The concept of tawheed, when we talk about it in, in its Maybe simplest terms, we talk about Tawheed al-Ubudiyya, Tawheed al-Rububiyya, Tawheed al-Asma' al-Sifat. And we sometimes do not make the connection between how fundamental is the concept of Tawheed to our being and being the foundation upon which we base even our engagement and our judgment of others. Because when we think of why do we do what we do, there's a reason behind it. The worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is fundamental to everything that we do. And we are guided by principles and values that would make this engagement, inshallah, the best form it can be. And so if we were to contribute something to the progress of our society, we do engage the issue of social justice, but we engage it with the values of Islam, with the principles that define who we are, and in doing so, not only are we true to ourselves, but we are providing the best that we can provide for the rest of our society. And so how do we see this? See, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the concept of tawheed, it starts by 
liberating the human being from the chains of this life to the breadths and avenues of the hereafter to being a servant to every cause other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to only being a servant to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that transformation that fundamental transformation of a servant who recognizes by believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the only deity worthy of worship is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who gives life and takes life is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has any real control over your life is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who provides the avenues of wealth is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who sets the pre pre precepts and the prescriptions upon us how do we distribute that wealth or how do we have a responsibility towards others is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that becomes foundational for anybody who needs to put himself to the responsibility of engaging not only the advocacy for social justice but also the implementation of the very ways that make social justice real and make social justice permanent and that's why it takes a believing person to be able to stand on a rock stand on a fundamental basis foundation that enables them to do this in doing so you liberate yourself also from the values and the norms that people may set for you if wealth is a measurement of how successful a person is not in your eyes because you know the story of the man of the two gardens or you know the story of Qarun when they have thought that this is the measure that people use to value the value of a person it was very untrue so the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is fundamental not only to liberate your ibadah so you worship no other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but it liberates and enhances your values and principles upon which you can move forward and then that tawheed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also liberates you as a human being from not becoming beholden to your own whims and desires and your weaknesses see when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created you Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you certain traits that will allow you to move forward in life but the divine guidance came to liberate you from being beholden to it so the whims and desires of mankind the need to acquire the need to procreate the need to, to be in the front are healthy if they are guided by the divine guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but they become a hindrance to you if they are the only thing that you want to achieve in your life and so when you break from those chains you become the person who is able to take on the challenge of being equitable and of being just and even if it was a justice against you or against your family for being humble and for being generous because without it you'd only want to keep on holding to that which is yours قُلْ لَوْ أَنْتُمْ تَمْلُكُونَ خَزَائِنَ رَحْمَةَ رَبِّي إِذَا لَأَمْسَكْتُمْ خَشْيَةَ الْإِنْفَاقِ وَكَانَ الْإِنْسَانُ قَتُورًا So even if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you all of the wealth of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you would hold because it's a weakness within you that can only be changed if you believe in zakah and its role and if you believe in giving for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so on and so forth so the first foundation is that of holding on to our tawheed that liberates it from all these chains the second condition that has to be present is our understanding that if you believe in the true liberation from any chain other than the worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then all of us are equal because we're all servants to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we all bow our heads to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we all wear a piece of white cloth in a mountain once a year in our lives in the Jabal of Arafah in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala no wealthy no poor no king no no person regular person and so immediately the fulfillment of the necessity of the understanding of equality and believing that all men are created equal becomes a natural result from the tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala most high set the rules ya ayyuhan nas inna khalaqnakum min dhakari wa unta wa ja'alnakum shu'uban wa qaba'ila lita'arafu inna akramakum inda Allahi atqakum the measure of 
dignity, the measure of honor, the measure of betterment between one person or another is the degree of taqwa to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So nobody, subhanahu wa ta'ala, most high, has the power to decide who's better other than the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala. So let's not fight for who's better than the other. We're all equal. And that equality, my dear brothers and sisters, has its own principles and values that the time does not allow us to explain it, but it is a foundation for what it means to have social justice in action. And the third is the need for us to find a system through which we can move in society because liberation allows you to feel unhinged except to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's all good. The feeling for equality gives you the sense that you can do anything you want for nobody has any control over you but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if that left alone, that will not create the venues of social justice that are necessary for us to engage society. So there has to be an understanding of social interdependence or solidarity, one that creates symbiotic relationship between the elements of one society, and that in Islam we call at takaful al ijtimai And if you look at the Sharia and if you look at the Islamic principles, they have created not only the foundations by tawheed and by equality, but also the tools by which we actually do this in order for us to not only celebrate and cherish the dependence amongst us, but rather to make it work for all of us and make it the tools by which we improve on the condition of man and we take humanity to a higher level. And so the personal freedom has responsibility with it. كل نفس بما كسبت رهيدا لها ما كسبت وعليها ما اكتسبت وَإِنْ لَيْسَ لِلْإِنسَانِ إِلَّا مَا سَعَى وَإِنَّ سَعْيَهُ سَوْفَ يُرَى So you are not left alone without accountability. You see, if you can reflect on the differences between what you see as the general definition that's not bounded by the Islamic guidance, you will gain the deep understanding, so on and so forth. There's responsibility towards parents, there's responsibilities towards others, there's responsibility towards the spouse in dividing the roles. And there's a responsibility in protecting the weak and building the nest necessary. There's the institution of zakah. There is the institution of mirath. There is institution of even the uqubat and the hudud that stops those who transgress upon others and so on and so forth. So my dear brothers and sisters, when we want to engage, rightfully so, in doing that which we think our Islam calls for, we need to understand that we need to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the best of our ability. So yes to our salah, and yes to our zakah, and yes to our siyam, and yes to our dhikr, and yes to our Quran, and yes to our, the sunnah of the Prophet sallam, and so on and so forth. But then we have to realize that there is a realm that allows us not only to fulfill the very mission that defines who we are, but it gives us a chance to contribute. And to really be in the forefront of transforming, inshallah, our society towards that which pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala most. While we are praying dearly for their guidance and for them to recognize that unless the divine guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala crowns the human endeavors on this earth, nobody will be successful and nobody can sustain this success. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to enlighten our hearts and to keep us steadfast and to give us the ability, inshallah, to be very true to our deen. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه إنه غفور رحيم. استغفر الله العظيم. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه والصلاة والسلام على الحبيب المصطفى وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولاه اللهم اعف عنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين اللهم اهدنا واهد بنا اللهم آت نفوسنا تقواها وزكها مولايا أنت خير من زكاها أنت وليها ومولاها عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله يذكركم وادعوه يستجب لكم ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون وقوموا إلى الصلاة يرحمكم الله وأقم الصلاة